In today's video, you're gonna create your new assistant. Don't worry, this new assistant doesn't require a W-2 or employee insurance. We're gonna learn how to leverage Zapier Central with creating behaviors and adding data sources so we can start actually understanding how this can apply to our business and the labor associated with our business. Therefore, in order to do so correctly, we're gonna to have to use an AI provider. So we're gonna use OpenAI and its assistance feature. We're gonna create a data set that is our business profile so we can get better and more effective answers. And to showcase its power, we're gonna go ahead and automatically respond to this email. Let's jump into today's video. To see the rest of the video, click the link down below. It's a $50 pay. No, I'm just joking. So in this video, this is gonna be probably one of the more powerful videos I do on this channel, especially since basically no one's doing any videos on Zapier Central. It almost like, I don't think I even know. <laughs> Maybe a lot of people don't know about it right now, but we're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna show you a really cool way so that when you start actually leveraging this feature, it gives you more effective outputs. Because one thing, as we know, when dealing with ChatGPT, any AI model, is a huge thing that happens is that it's not, it doesn't understand context in the sense of like why you're using it in the specific type of output you're looking for. As we know, custom instructions can help with ChatGPT. There's different ways we can go about it so that the outputs are more effective. In this video, we're gonna learn how to get more effective outputs with Zapier Central and more specifically, how this would apply to our automations. This is my Twitter, description down below. Let's jump into today's video. Right off the bat, go ahead and check out that video right there. If you don't even have an idea what Zambier Central is, it's going to show you how to create behaviors, add data sources, and everything that this can do up to this point. Then come back to this video. On this video, though, we're going to just go over how to make these things even more effective. So we got our assistant, your new assistant. Maybe it's Jim. Maybe it's Mary. Whatever it may be, we're going to go ahead and train this new assistant with a data source. The data source is going to be very simple. Create a Google Doc, Microsoft Doc, and let's proceed. The way I want you to think of this Google Doc is it's gonna be basically the context that we provide these bots, we get more effective outputs. So provide all relevant information that your assistant would know in the context that this was an employee, such as company name, location, maybe stuff like founded CEO industry isn't as relevant, but for me, I'm just gonna leave it there. Mission statement, services offered. This is probably pretty important. So for example, we got solar panel installation, energy efficiency, consulting, sustainable urban planning. Corbin, do you run this company? No, I do not. This is all a <laughs> chat GBT output. I also want to notate that the actual formatting of this document is irrelevant. For example, I mean, it's relevant if you want to see like it look cooler or more pretty. So if I bold this for my eyes to make it like more clear to me, you can do that. But when a AI model reads this, they don't care. They're just reading the data, right? So let's keep on coming down here. If this is relevant for your use case, you would provide key clients, maybe an award. Probably super important would be contact information, such as your phone number, email, website. Now we can kind of get into more of the proctoring of how we want to structure our responses depending on the context. So maybe your assistant is handling email. Maybe your assistant's handling Excel sheets. This is where you're going to give the kind of the structuring of how you want to input data, how you want to respond to emails, you know, everything above the board. Here is our email response guidelines to ensure consistency and professionalism in our communication. Follow these guidelines when responding to emails. Promptness, probably not too relevant, honestly. So we can delete that. Tone, relevant. Clarity, relevant. Accuracy, relevant. Escalation, possibly relevant, but probably not too much in this context. So, you know, tone, clarity, accuracy. Maybe you want to add another part here that says, you know, reference this email at the end and then provide the email whatever it may be, leave it at that. So this is like what we're really looking for here is that you are operating a business. So you know how you operate with clients, you know from past data and past conversations, past experiences, what typically gets the better responses. And if you don't, then keep it general, uh, A, B test, proceed in that manner. Then we got frequently asked questions, which can be relevant for the context of your business. So such as, how do I get a quote for a solar panel installation? What warranty do you offer on your renewable energy sources? Can your energy solutions be implemented in existing buildings? You know, stuff that comes up very, very often within your business. Once you kind of created a doc like this, and it has a sufficient amount of data, this is Arial at 11 font. I would say the max amount of data you probably want to provide a bot in this context is between five to 10 pages. Proceed. Let's go ahead and then export this as a PDF. So I'm going to come up here to file, download, PDF. So we have the information about our business. Corbin, let's just jump over here and just start going. No, no, no. We got to actually set it up so that we can reference this information in the context of artificial intelligence. So we're going to use OpenAI. You actually probably already know what OpenAI is. If you have no clue about Zapier and OpenAI and how they work together, you can check out the playlist at the end here. The first two videos are like combined or over an hour and 10 minutes. So you can get everything you need to know about this industry. 
I'm hit create. Also, side note, I've done a ton of videos when it comes to assistance API in the specific context of Zapier no code friendly solutions. That sounded like a slogan. Let's get the name here. I'm going to go ahead and name it the fake business here. Instructions are going to be relevant, but let's just come down here real quick to the files. This is what we care about. So we're going to upload our data. The data we're uploading is that PDF we just created together in Google Doc. Couldn't save, don't worry. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and add some instructions here. We're going to say follow the, and then I like to usually just give like copy this. And I'll add to quotation marks for context on how to respond. We'll leave it at that for now. Now, depending on your use case, this is going to give you discretion on what model to use. If you're building out an API, honestly, I would try both depending on how effective the outputs and inputs are. Just as a quick shorthand, 3.5 is cheaper than GPT-4. GPT-4 is for more, the way I like to phrase it is basically use GPT-4 outputs if a human's gonna look at it. If a human's not gonna look at it and it's more of a data manipulation, data input output, you'd use 3.5. For example, I can see a context here where you would fine tune a API assistant like this for Excel sheets and data inputting and outputting. 3.5 could probably work in that context. For this manner, we're gonna go ahead and just jump up to GPT-4 Turbo. Keep in mind as well, in the industry with APIs and accessing AI providers, there is a downtrend when it comes to cost, other than like Cloud3 that is more expensive than GPT-4. But for the most part, there's a downtrend. In November of last year, when it came to accessing an endpoint of GPT-4, it's actually 66% cheaper now. Super cool. Let's go ahead and hit save. Side note, in order to access files, we do need to have code interpreter and retrieval on, okay? All right, so we have our assistant here. The reason we use this assistant is for the fact that now we can reference this assistant in Zapier. Coming over to Zapier here, let's create our behavior. We're gonna hit create behavior, and here we go. Let's do an event, and this could be any context, but I usually like to do the event of basically we can command it. I think that's probably the most powerful point of this feature, and we're gonna say the command is respond email. I think that's good, add trigger. So anytime I hit, or anytime I type in respond email, this is going to run this following flow. So we're gonna add an action. We're gonna do an action of Gmail. We're gonna say find email. For reference, this is the example data point coming in here. This dude, I don't know who this guy is, but uh, he looks pretty cool. I like that sweater. <laughs> Maybe we could be friends. He is basically asking, how do I get a quote on solar panel installation? Coming over here, let's go ahead and proceed. So the search thing we're gonna do is, Typically, when it comes to receiving inquiries over email, most of the times you'll have a piece of fixed text in there. So are you receiving it from Yelp, Google Business, whatever it may be, you'll have a piece of fixed text in the subject line, therefore making this entire process a lot easier when it comes to making sure that we only find specific emails that are inquiry emails. Knowing this, I'm gonna reference this tutorial right here. This tutorial right here is gonna show you how to basically grab emails that maybe aren't perfectly structured that maybe come in like this, and you can go ahead and learn how to use AI in order to identify between a you know MailChimp subscription and a actual lead email. So use that tutorial right there. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just gonna show you how to respond and you know use this chat bot. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do this for right now. Reference that tutorial up there if you wanna see how to use AI to identify or alternatively use filters at action. And the next action here is gonna be a chat GBT blog. So we'll do chat GPT, we'll do conversation, or we'll do conversation with assistant. That's the whole point of what we just did there. So we'll do conversation with assistant. We're gonna go ahead and have it generate the message. The assistant is going to be a specific field here. We might have to give the exact ID here, unless it shows up, it does show up. We're gonna click our assistant. So we're gonna have to have AI generate the value for this field. And everything else we're gonna have AI do, except the model should be very specific. We should have that up to GPT-4. Now, here's the first thing that you'll realize, not vision, we don't need this to see anything. <laughs> here's the first thing you'll realize when leveraging central is it doesn't necessarily allow you to reference data points and chain it. That is where this comes into play. So this can, this can get a little confusing, but you have to make sure your instructions are very specific on the way it handles this kind of information. That's why we're basically leaving the message as have AI generate the field, but it has context from the assistant and the instructions we set up within the assistance API. Okay, let's go ahead and add an action here. We're gonna say send email or create a draft. Send email will automatically send an email to the receive, to the basically the person that sent the email to us. 
purpose is a video so we can kind of look at it. We're going to say create a draft. And then add action. All right, so this is where the, the fun comes into play. This may take a couple more times to go. Can I update this name? I cannot update this name. We're going to go ahead and begin here. When I say uh, apostrophe or quotation marks, find the email and understand the type subject line and body. Once you understand both, use, I'm going to say conversation, and we'll just type it out, conversation with assistant action to write, to generate a subject line and body. Then once generated output, place in the create draft action. Two things. First thing. This is my first time actually proctoring in this context, so we'll see if this even works. Second thing, I may actually have to add more information to the assistance API to make it more specialized for email responsing. So it can't, it may be not be able to be a broad version of the data. Let's find out though. Let's test, test this behavior. What we're expecting here is we're expecting a draft to show up that responds to this inquiry and let's see what happens. I wanna also point out as well, if this works, this is actually gonna be pretty crazy because alternatively, this would have required a formatter block uh, in the context of an automation. It would have required a lot more blocks, a lot more work in order to get this kind of output. So we got the conversation with the assistants complete. Let's see if it can actually set up a draft here. And we can gut check it with our data source to make sure it's actually the correct answer. Okay, I'm gonna be genuinely impressed if this works. Let's see. <laughs> Reload this. Got a draft. To get a quote for the solar panel installation for communication, we have two options. Contact them through the website, call their customer service line. Let's see if that's what we put into our draft or data. Scrolling down here, a little over here, y'all. Okay, initial inquiry. This is the first time I'm doing this, y'all, all right? This is like, so we got, how do I get a quote for solar panel installation? How do I get a quote for solar panel installation? You can request a quote by contacting, through, contacting us through the website or calling our customer service line. Draft, contact through the website, call customer service line. Ooh, okay. Okay, it worked. Now, to be honest with y'all, maybe we need to add a little bit more information like, hey, when responding to inquiries, provide the customer service line, like the number or provide the website. But holy smokes, y'all, this actually just worked. Okay, this worked. It was able to reference the data. <laughs> yeah, no, this worked, y'all. So now that this works, which is like extremely cool. If I wanna go, go ahead and just refresh a chat here. And if you reference that other video I referenced earlier, now what you can do is we can set up logic where, okay, first off, I wanna point out something as well, which is kind of insane. So you know how I said earlier that you would need a formatter block? Like if you're familiar with this channel, you know what I'm talking about. You would need a formatter block to split the data points between the subject line and the body and how to like structure everything. With this conversational, with Central, what they're doing is they're adding like a, when I reference a chat GBT block and conversational assistant, they're adding another layer of artificial intelligence to like basically smooth it over to make sure that everything comes out more correct in a way. Like this is big y'all. Like if you have little to no knowledge of how to talk to these models, this seems like a very easy way to start doing this. Okay, like bot command. Let's go ahead, um, whatever, we can give it bot command. The way we reference it though, we're gonna respond email. So I may need to do more videos on this because for example, what I could do is I'm starting my work day. I have 10 unread emails. I'm like, you know, I don't wanna respond to any of that. I've already lasered in through the API assistant, who I am, purpose, everything. I've done some work on it. All I would need to do now, and I could do a loop function to go through the emails, is simply go to my central Zapier, click respond to email, and then we could set up a flow where it's checking every single email, do, 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 has context, do, 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 and then responds to every single email with drafts or automatically. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, this is it. It seems like though as well, you may need to actually proctor and say do action respond to email, and then it will keep going with everything we just set up. That's impressive, y'all. Uh, yeah, this is this is huge. This basically, I mean, imagine two years from now, this, if we can do this now, I mean, we could basically, what I just described that workflow, we could do as well 
which would be actually pretty crazy good. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this. Make sure you leave a like. It lets me know on this channel if you want to see more stuff like this. It's completely free. I'm going to leave a playlist at the end here showing everything we can do with Zapier. I've kind of like moved it around more. Some more recent videos are on the top. You can get all the context of how to start leveraging artificial intelligence and automations in your business. But in today's video, we just created your new assistant. And with basically probably a four or five hours of just going at it, you could probably create something very effective for your business. This is also free as of now. I have no clue how they're going to charge in the future. I'll see you in the next video. That's a playlist I was referring to when it comes to Zapier and artificial intelligence and how to leverage it. That's a random video. That's my face. Make sure to click subscribe, click notification bell, leave a comment, all that good stuff. Bye-bye.